In the months of April and May, it's a safe bet if you're looking for Mark and Jake Romanak, you'll find them on the Detroit River. Countless walleye from both Lake Erie and nearby Lake St. Clair converge on the Detroit River during the annual spawning run. Mark and Jake put on a literal jig fishing clinic, catching walleye that would make even a leprechaun green with envy. Just a little guy, Dad. This one isn't even worth getting a net for. <laughs> they're, all, they're all worth getting a net for. What are you talking about? It's a good start, though. It's a beautiful morning. You see the sky. It's, it's beautiful clouds, flat calm. It's just a little guy right there. But we're on the Detroit River this morning. We're going to get this one back, throw him in the drink, and, uh, and hopefully we're going to put a pile of, of Detroit River walleyes in the boat today. Um, but that's a good start. I think we can do a little bit better than that one, though. <laughs> early morning bite. That fish just tunked it. I'm up in 10 feet of water right now. And uh, actually where we're fishing right now is an area called the Pencil Buoys, which is a pretty well-known area on the Detroit River. Um, but what it is is a gravel flat that comes off this point here. So right now I'm only in 10 feet of water and it comes up pretty shallow and these fish are up on this flat right now, first thing in the morning, and they are definitely actively feeding. Oh, good morning. Detroit City. Jake, these males are just red hot in here. Holy smokes. Man, that is a good looking fish right there, especially if a guy is interested in eating some, but these are going back today. You gotta love that. Detroit River, April, May. It don't get much better than that. Woo! Bunch of males up here, Dad. They're biting good, though. Oh, yeah. There's no question when they're biting. Swing him in. He's about as big as you want to alley you. you know, one thing about the Detroit River, and you're going to see this in this, this episode today, is that the quality of the fish in the Detroit River is getting better and better every year. We had some tremendous natural reproduction out here in the Lake Erie Detroit River system, and every single year these fish are getting bigger and bigger. And this becomes an average fish, and we're going to catch a lot, you know, a lot nicer fish than these right here. But there seems to be a lot of males up on this gravel flat right now in this 10 feet of water, um, actively spawning. Oh man, I love fishing these spring fish. So much fun. A little bit better quality fish there. Come on over here. Get him in the scoop. Atta boy. Show that guy off a little bit. Man, are they pretty. If a guy's interested in keeping a bunch of fish, this is a really good place to do it. Uh, but we're kind of going with the karma thing. We feel if we let them go, they'll tell their buddies that maybe some more become and bite for us, so uh, we're gonna let them go today and, uh, and let them do their natural thing. When most people think of the Detroit River, they're thinking of April, and I understand it. Everybody is in a hurry to get out on the water and get in those first few trips of the year, and April is a great time to come here, especially if you're looking for big fish. On the other hand, if you're more motivated by numbers and you like catching lots of fish, you might wanna consider coming in May. 
The month of May, the fishing here is phenomenal, even though the fish may not be as big. The numbers of fish you're likely to catch is probably gonna impress you. You know, I think one of the more important things when it comes to vertical jigging is the rod and reel setup that you have in your hand. Uh, and then just how you fish. And, and when it comes to vertical jigging, I think that there's a, a million ways to skin a cat. Um, but what I like to do is I like to use my wrist when I'm jigging. It allows me to fish all day without getting fatigued. But to do that, you have to have a rod that's balanced in your hand. Um, and you don't have to spend a ton of money when it comes to a vertical jigging rod. This RG setup falls in that $89 category. Um, and they're on sale all the time. So it's really you want to find something that's comfortable in your hand. And then when it comes to the actual jigging presentation itself, I very rarely ever move my arm. Almost everything is in my wrist. The reason for that is you'll find out quickly when you're out here, if you're moving your arm up and down all day long, after about a couple of hours, you're really gonna get fatigued and then you're gonna miss fish. So I like to use my wrist when I'm jig fishing. And basically all I'm doing is I'm lifting up until I feel that jig come up off bottom. I hold it there for a couple seconds and then I drop back down to make sure I'm in contact with bottom. Then when a fish does bite, I'm also setting the hook with my wrist and then lifting up with my arm. So what I'm actually doing is I'm quickly setting the hook with my wrist and then finishing that hook set by lifting with my arm. And doing that sounds like something very simple, but it allows you to fish on the water all day long with very little fatigue. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fish hawk is called boating. Oh, there's fish. You know, one of the cool things about the Detroit River is water clarity, and it makes a big difference in fishing. Ooh, there he is right there. Oh, jeez. That's a bad fish, yeah. Jacob. Nice fish. <laughs> oh, thank you, kid. I appreciate that. Let's get him out, show him off here real quick. And then I'll finish my thought. That's a really nice looking fish. And what we were talking about is water clarity. Today there's places on the Detroit River that literally the water is gin clear, and there's other places where it's super, super murky. And typically speaking, jig fishing is gonna be better uh, when you find fish in clear water, but sometimes you're forced to fish in dirty water conditions. And today, the water's a little murky, so we're bulking up using a little bit bigger plastics, a little bit brighter color plastics, and actually adding a minnow on top of our plastic to bulk up the presentation so the fish can see it a little bit better. When they see it, they eat it, and this is the result. That is a good looking Detroit River walleye. If you've never been to the Detroit River and you don't know where to start, don't worry about it. There are a lot of people fishing here and you're going to see lots of boats on the water. The beauty of that is if you keep your head on a swivel and keep your eyes open, you'll see people catching fish and it makes it real easy to figure out where the fish are and what drift line that you need to be on. So don't be afraid to get in the pack and drift right along with everybody else. It's a big party here on the Detroit River. There's lots of boats and there's lots of fish to be caught. There's one. Hooked up, Jake? Yeah. Oh, he's got some shoulders on. He didn't feel like he was too impressive to start, but woke up a little bit. Oh, just a little guy, Dad. I'll just alley-oop him in. Oh! That's a good one. <laughs> Show him off quick. It's a little eater. This river is absolutely chock full of fish like that. It's a nice fish. Well, vertical jigging for walleyes in a river is a very technical presentation. It requires some very specific pieces of gear to be successful. And of all the pieces of gear that you're going to own, the rods, the reels, the jigs, and the plastics and all that stuff, in my opinion, the most important piece of equipment you're going to own is the line. And you're going to need a low stretch super line. And super lines come in three different categories. There's what they call a fuse line, which is generally made out of micro dyneema. And then there's braided lines, and they're made out of spectra fiber, and they come in two classes. There's a four carrier braid, um, which is a good line, and there's an eight carrier braid, which is a little bit better. The difference between four carrier and eight carrier is eight carrier is twisted a little tighter and it lays on the spool a little bit more like monofilament, so it's a little bit more user friendly, if you will. If you go with these braided materials, they'll have lo very little stretch in the line, and so your sensitivity is increased. You can feel bites, you can feel the bottom. It makes it easier to stay vertical. All of these things are excellent characteristics. So the most important thing you can put on your fishing reel is a super line. If you do that, you're probably gonna be much more successful in the Detroit River catching walleyes like we're getting today. Is that gonna be a netter, dude? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. in the scoop. There he is. You really can't ask for a walleye to eat a jig better than that right there. That fish hammered it. Fish are pretty active right now this morning, which is really good to see. 
Um, what we're doing here, in most river situations you're gonna find this, there's gonna be shipping channels, right? And these fish like to be on the edge of the shipping channel for the most part. Sometimes you'll find them in the center, sometimes you'll find them on top, but for the most part, they're gonna be right on the edge of the shipping channel. So what I'm using is my graph, and I'm using the GPS on the graph, and you can see the actual contour edge, and we're just floating down that contour edge where these fish seem to be. And right now it seems anywhere from that 20 to 24 feet of water is where these fish are really piled in. So I'm keeping the boat in that depth of water to keep us on the fish. Let's talk a little bit about some of the plastic styles that work good for jig fishing. There are so many different walleye type plastics out there to choose from. It's a little bit mind boggling and can be a little bit intimidating for many people. I like to just simplify it and just use four different styles. And the first style I'm using, uh, just a finesse style worm, very common size, uh, about four inches seems to be about the right size. The next style of uh, plastic that I think works really good are what we call these split tail minnows. And again, a three or a four inch is about the right size. Some guys will push those out to about five inches, uh, but that works really good. When the fish are active, sometimes paddle tails seem to be real good. Uh, some people will call these swim baits. Three and a half, four, four and a half, five inches is about the right size. That paddle tail's got a little bit more thump and they work real well at times as well. And the last style is kind of an old classic, what I would call a curl tail grub or just an action tail grub. And these can be threes or fours. Um, they work real good, either three inch or four inch works real well. One of those four styles of plastics is gonna catch a fish. Um, each day it may change, and one day one plastic might be better than the next. Sometimes you have to use several different types of plastics in any given day. But if you have those four styles in your boat, you're going to be successful. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. Hey, I'm Mark Romanak with Precision Trolling Data. If you're a crappie fisherman, there's a pretty good chance you do a lot of things like pulling jigs for crappie or possibly trolling crankbaits for crappie. Now the question becomes, do you have any idea how deep that gear is actually running below the surface? And if you don't, you're going to need some technology called the Precision Trolling Data app. What the app does is it allows you to manipulate all the important variables associated with trolling, things like lead length, line diameter, trolling speed, even the line types that you might use in order to be able to get your lures to run precisely to the depth where you're marking fish. The way we do this is we use the app in combination with a sonar unit. You turn on your sonar, you're marking fish, you know how deep those fish are below the surface. Then you can go to the app and you can use the picker wheels on the app to identify the key lead length that you need to use or maybe the trolling speed or even the line diameter you need to use in order to specifically get your lures to those target depths. The beauty of this is that once you get to those target depths, you're gonna catch fish. Even better, you can replicate that data by doing it over and over and over again, which allows you to catch more and bigger crappies. Now the Precision Trolling Data app is available for both phone types. You can get it for Android or you can get it for iPhone. Where do you find this information? You can go to the Google Play Store or you can go to the Apple App Store and simply search for Precision Trolling Data. What will pop up is the options that you can purchase for the app. You can buy individual dive curves if you want or you can buy the entire crappie subscription. Now what type of data are we talking about? Things like jigs, for example. All the common jigs you would use for crappie fishing, 1 32nd, 1 16th, and 1 8th ounce jigs are going to be included. What about action jigs? Things like the famous Roadrunner. Yep, they're included as well. How about crankbaits? Well, all the popular crankbaits you would typically use for crappie fishing are going to be included. Shad wraps, flicker shad, flicker minnows, Selma hornets, the list goes on and on, just to name a few. Hey, if you're a crappie fisherman, you want to check out the Precision Trolling Data Crappie Subscription. It's going to help you catch more and bigger crappies. Ooh, you can't hit it much harder than that. Holy cow. Man, oh man, oh man. If I ripped the rod out of my hand, Dad. I like when that happens. Oh, that fish was charged up. Oh, I guess so. Somehow you can swim around this and way I'll, on the side I'll a give you a little bit. help with the landing net. Whoa! <laughs> there I go. Not my best landing job, but it came in the came in the boat. That fish was just absolutely charged up, Dad. 
That is a beautiful Detroit River walleye there. He was actually hooked a little bit underneath the gill. Must have just missed the jig as I was lifting it up, but these fish are going back anyways. Um, that would be a foul hooked fish and you'd have to go back, but we're putting all these fish back today. What a beautiful fish, Dad. So the key to vertical jigging is doing just that, it's staying vertical. And what you want to do to stay vertical, it's a pretty simple process. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to put the nose of the boat into the wind. Don't worry about which way the current's going, always keep the nose of the boat into the wind. So you can see right now I'm talking directly into the wind because that's the way that the nose of the boat is facing. And then what we do is something I like to call line chasing. If the boat drifts from right to left, all you're basically doing is just chasing the line, trying to keep that line perfectly vertical. So you can see as this wind is blowing, it's actually drifting the boat back up current. And you can see that line is getting further away from the boat. So I take the electric motor and I just drive it right back to the line. And one of the things you want to keep in mind with your electric motor is you don't want to have it overpowered, meaning that you're driving over top of the line. Um, just a little bit goes a long way, little small adjustments is all you need. So now I'm actually drifting back, so I'm going to drive the boat back forward. And that's vertical jigging. You're going to be constantly adjusting your electric motor all day long to stay perfectly vertical. Now you have a couple options when it comes to your electric motor and staying vertical. You can use a key fob, which is what I have in my hand here. And when I'm one rod jigging, I prefer to use the key fob. It's something that I've grown up using and I just feel very comfortable with it. Or you can use a foot control. There's no right or wrong when it comes to that. It's totally personal preference. And whatever feels most comfortable for you when you're up on the bow fishing. We've been able to stay on them pretty good all day. And catching ourselves just a ton of fish. Absolutely a ton of fish. Man, what a beautiful looking walleye that is. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Daiwa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. Boy, he has just smashed it, Dad. That is a good thing. Try to keep the boat straight here. Wind's picking up a little bit, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. One of the things about jig fishing, oh, that's a nice oh, fish. That's a nice fish, Jake. There's good quality fish here in this spot. Can you swing in this way just a little bit for me? There you, there go. you go. They are high quality fish. Nice, nice males. Almost a double header, Jake. <laughs> Now you go ahead, you just play with your fish. I'll take care of myself I was here. trying to do an interview, Dad. We're shooting a TV show. <laughs> We're trying to shoot a television show and <laughs> these fish just keep getting in the way. It's really a problem. <laughs> oh, baby, this one ate it right down to his gullet. I got my fish out of the net, so. Well, thank you, son. I pre- Oh, <laughs> rim shot. He's off in the net. <laughs> All right. He's so spunky, we'll put him back and let him fight another day. Thank you, Jake. You know, if you're going to come to the Detroit River, you're going to need lots of jigs, lots and lots of jigs, and different sizes for different water depth applications. A 3 8 ounce jig is going to fish you down 10, 15 feet real nice on most days. Um, you get into 20, 22 feet of water or so, you're going to probably want to bump up to a half, maybe a 5 ounce jig. You get into that, you know, that water that's in that 30 foot range, and you're going to see a lot of that here in the Detroit River, you're going to need a 3 quarter uh, jig, no question whatsoever. Uh, and if you fish any deeper, if you're getting at between 30 and 40 feet or on windy days, you're going to need a one ounce jig. So you have to have all of those jig sizes in order to be effective because um, like today where the wind is picking up pretty quick here, I'm probably going to put a, a little bit heavier jig on because in the windy conditions, it's a little easier to feel the bottom with a slightly heavier jig. So if you have all those jigs at your disposal, you're going to be very successful here on the river. That is a nice fish right there. Look at that, that whole jig in his mouth. You know, this is a three quarter ounce jig, so it's a big jig, big profile. They got no problem chomping it today. Good, good fishing today. Well, we've talked about lines, we've talked about jigs, and we've talked about boat control. The other thing that you need to understand about vertical jigging is you really do need special kinds of rods for this presentation. And when I mean special, I don't mean that they have to be super expensive or anything, but what they do need to be is a little stiffer uh, than what the average uh, spinning rod would be. The reason for that is a stiff rod telegraphs the bite a little bit better. And also remember, here in the Detroit River, we're fishing some pretty big jigs. You're gonna need a much stiffer rod to handle that. I recommend getting something that's at least a medium heavy action. And most rod companies, you're gonna to struggle to find um, jigging rods in that medium heavy action. The one I'm using right now is made by Daiwa. It's called an RG series. It's a six foot medium heavy and it's just perfect for this presentation. And it's not an expensive rod. It costs about uh, $89, which in this day and age, that's not an expensive fishing pole. So make sure your rods are stiff enough for the presentation and it'll also help you catch a lot more fish. 
that one was just there. So that was the second kind of bite that you get when you're jig fishing is I dropped that jig on slack line and when I lifted up there was just weight. And I think that's the, the bite that a lot of people struggle with. Oh, very nice fish. Because one of the things is when you lift up and feel weight, you have to set the hook. If you pause, that fish just opens his mouth and it comes out. Nice fish, Dad. Oh, I love it. Man, we have had an awesome day today, Jake. Yeah, that's a little bit nicer fish right there. That is a beautiful Detroit River walleye. The bite was a little bit different with this fish. And when you're vertical jigging, you're gonna get two different types of bites. One is gonna be that tunk in the line, the one that everybody knows and everybody loves. The second bite that you're gonna get is a little bit different. Basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna drop that jig on slack line, and when you lift up, there's just gonna be weight there. Now that's the one that takes a little bit of practice because if you feel that weight and you hesitate just for a second, that walleye will open its mouth and the jig will be out and you'll just simply miss those fish. So you almost have to train your brain to whenever you feel anything a little bit different, set the hook. Remember that hook sets are free, so it's okay to set the hook whenever anything feels just a little bit different. And you'll catch beautiful fish like that one right there. Jake, we're hooked up, man. I'm gonna get this rod down here. Here in the net. Oh, that's oh, a nice, nice fish. Nice looking fish. It's a right really there. A nice fish. Really a nice looking fish. Let me see if I can get him up here for you. Oh, oh thank you, kid. Good fish. <laughs> good Ooh, fish. Let me get him out of the net. All right. Now that is what we're talking about. Hey, my name is Mark Romanak. We appreciate you watching Fishing 401 today. Hope you picked up a tip or two that'll make you more successful on the Detroit River. Look at that, Jake. That has a beautiful fish. <laughs> Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. And the fish are just biting good, and they are biting good today, aren't they, Jake? Yeah, they sure are. Man, they are definitely biting good today. <laughs> I, should, I should have known. <laughs> I jinxed myself.